love my family. I love them so much. I love my parents, and yet I'm so in fear in my life because of the past uh, abuse that I've encountered. Well, Barry said she feared her parents would kill her because she became a Christian. But now, a judge down in Florida ordering her to go back home to Ohio. Was this the right decision? Frank Gaffney is the president of the Center for Security Policy, and he is our guest this morning. Good morning to you, Frank. Good morning, all. So this is a really complicated case now because there was a study that came out a few weeks ago down in Florida that said that they believed that Rivka Berry was not in danger if she went back to her family in Ohio. And now it seems to be actually hanging on the immigration status of the parents. They, in fact, may be here illegally. What do you make of all that? Well, let's start with the beginning. Uh, Rivka Berry is under what authoritative Islam calls Sharia, an apostate, which means she is guilty of a capital crime, leaving the faith. Uh, the judge has decided that uh, on the basis of a deeply flawed report by the Florida Department of Law Enforcement, something that simply did not get into all of the relevant facts, mm -hmm. that he has no choice but to send her back to Ohio unless, get this, she is not here legally with her family, in which case she gets sent back to Sri Lanka. And either way, if she's remanded to the custody of her family, if right. she winds up living in a Sharia adherent community in Ohio, or worse yet, if she goes back to Sri Lanka, she's a dead girl walking, I'm afraid. Well, so, Frank, what it comes down to is essentially the Florida judge said, hey, I don't have jurisdiction. Florida doesn't have jurisdiction. Ohio has jurisdiction. So I'm going to send her back into the Ohio court system. She's not going home. She's going to wind up in a foster care uh, situation until they can sort it all out. Isn't well, that, okay? that, that remains to be seen. That remains to be seen. I, I think uh, if she's in a community that she has fled because her family is part of a Sharia adherent mm -hmm. um, mosque and, and community, this is entirely possible that somebody else may find her, if not her family mm -hmm. who thinks apparently that uh, uh, honor killing is an appropriate way to handle such things. This is, this is the underlying problem and I, I hope that there will be additional legal proceedings that will give this girl the option of staying safe and free in America, in Florida where she would she has fled to I hope that there will be an understanding out of all of this that what has happened to date is a travesty and that we really do have a problem of Sharia in this country and third I most especially hope that this whole experience will elevate in the eyes of most Americans an awareness of what former Muslims are experiencing here and there's a new organization called former Muslims United to try to help do that right. they're arguably the most endangered species in America today, a minority that is at risk not of just having you know, discrimination against them, but it's being killed. And that could certainly happen to her in Sri Lanka if she winds up going back there. Mm -hmm. Frank, as this progresses and we find out the next move, we'll certainly be calling you again. Thanks for joining us this morning. Thank you.